Good morning, brethren, sisters, and church of the living God. Hello. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures. Um, we are going to be looking into Psalm 101 this morning, uh, but we're, we're not going to start there. We're going to start off in um, Exodus. This video... This video is a rebuke. This video is a rebuke. Um, I'll tell you, going through this, um, you know, you teach others, teach you not yourself. <laughs> going through this, um, yeah, this was a rebuke to me as well. To me as well. We, as the Church of the Living God, Church of God. We mustn't behave ourselves as the world, or even more so, of these Christians who think it is acceptable and well within your God given right to utilize the tactics of serpents in the name of the Lord. This is this is not acceptable. This is not right. I have, I, hello, I have done this myself. And it is not right. Like I said, going through this this morning, I, I'm sitting here in uh, Brother Alexander's room, um, going through this, and I'm, you know, like, wow, wow. And I go to tell my wife, it's like, okay, I got, you know, you know the Lord's just giving me a video to talk about, <laughs> you know, made a mention. It's like, yeah, you've been commenting to yourself. This has been a rebuke to me as well. And it's going to be a rebuke to you, as, uh, you too, okay? Now, there is a time and a place for everything, for every purpose under the heaven. Yes, there is. But when we, who are of the church of God, the church of the living God, the ground and pillar of the truth, when we start utilizing tactics that serpents, coadjutors, are utilizing, there's a problem there. There's a problem there. And I, I got to first take... I'm guilty of doing this. I'm guilty. I let my temper get the best of me. I do. I do. And uh, I personally like to drive home things and put the nails in the coffin. Um, I overdo it sometimes on that. I do. I do. Um, you know... Uh, <laughs> Like the videos uh, rebuking the charismatics, uh, which YouTube really doesn't like. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, um, I overdid it. Even though what the Lord gave me to do was factual true, um, I did overdo it. I did overdo it. I let my temper get the best of me. While the videos that the Lord had me to do were right, true, accurate, and faithful. The way I went about it, my countenance and stuff like that, the way I went about it should have been done differently. I, I, I confess that. I confess that. Like, like I said, the videos exposing the charismatics... Um, those were done right because it was given to me of the Lord to rebuke this charismatic nonsense. But I could have been of a better countenance in doing so. And going through this this morning was also a rebuke unto me. So let us begin here. Let us begin in Exodus chapter 23. We are going to be reading verses 1... On to verse 7, just to start. Then we're going to get to Psalm 101, and we're going to have a little expository there, okay? But please get your authorized version of the scriptures. Follow me along word for word, verse by verse, as we go through this together, okay? Together. Follow me along. Make sure I'm not skipping a groove. Make sure I ain't lying to you. Make sure I'm telling you the truth. Follow me along, okay? 
Exodus chapter 23. This very meat, very meat. There are people out there who are slandering brethren. And it needs to stop. And these people you we can't go to because anything you try to do in love will be twisted and turned against you, just like these devil coadjutors do. If you're of the Church of the Living God and you're utilizing Satanic tactics regularly, <laughs> um, you really need to check yourself and be like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay? So, Exodus chapter 23, we will be reading verses 1 on to verse 7. Please follow me along. One second, brethren. Sorry about that. Exodus 23, verses 1 on to verse 7. Thou shalt not raise a false report. Put not thine hand with the wicked to be an unrighteous witness. Thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil. Neither shalt thou speak in a cause to decline after many to rest judgment. Thou shalt not raise a false report. Taking something that is true, yet twisting it in a false way to paint a brother in the picture as a wicked, evil man. That's, that's, that's sin. That's sin. Okay? And that's something that coadjutors are really good at. Taking something that is plain black and white and twisting it, and twisting it in a way to make whomever they're trying to slander look evil. Okay? That, that is wicked. That is wicked, and you need to be careful about that, okay? Thou shalt not raise a false report. Put not thine hand with the wicked to be an unrighteous witness. See, you utilizing those things that these coadjutor devils do, you're putting, you're joining yourself with them and doing it the way they do it. See, okay? You fight fire with fire, fire wins. Hey, I'm guilty of this too, and it's got to stop. It's got to stop. We're supposed to be different, remember? We're not supposed to be like them. And these satanic, Jesuit, coadjutor, infiltrator devils, and these Christians, okay? They're not of us. They are of the world, therefore the world heareth them, okay? And when you do things in the worldly way, the world is going to hear you. Thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil. Everybody else is doing it. Hey, hey, we learn from His Holiness Himself how to do this. So you're following the multitude to do evil. Hmm. Neither shalt thou speak in a cause to decline after many to rest judgment. Neither shalt thou countenance a poor man in his cause. Countenance. Countenance is your body. Visage is your face, okay? Countenance. Neither shalt thou countenance a poor man in his cause. Making yourself look better than the poor man. And remember, being a poor man is not always necessarily a lack of money, okay? That's, it's a little bit deeper than that, okay? Just so you know. Poor man. If thou meet thine... Now right here. And this is the Old Testament under the law. If thou meet thine enemy's ox or his ass going astray, thou shalt surely bring it back to him again. Your enemy. So if my enemy's whatever was gone or lost and I found it, I'm supposed to return it to my enemy. Why? For um, if your enemy hunger, give him bread to eat. And if he is thirsty, give him water to drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire upon his head. And the Lord will reward you. Okay? We're not supposed to be fighting fire with fire. My greatest enemy lost something. And I found it. I, as the church of God, this is right here in Exodus, is for our instruction and righteousness. Okay? And Paul also echoes, if your enemy hunger feed him, okay? Crosses dispensational lines, okay? So if my worst enemy were to lose something and I were to find it, Okay, and even if it was something that was desirable to mine eyes, I were I am supposed to give it back to him. Okay, 
Because we're supposed to be different. Okay? If thou seest the ass of him that hateth thee lying under his burden. Uh, what that means, the ass falling down with all the stuff on top of it. Okay? Take a picture of that. Okay? The animal, the ass that has all the stuff. Because remember, they would use asses as transport. They would load them. You see pictures of them. Put all this stuff on the ass there. And then the ass might have fallen over. Why? If thou seest the ass of him that hateth thee lying under his burden. And what is forbear to help him? Like, I'm not going to help him. Thou shalt surely help with him. Hmm. Isn't that something, huh? Thou shalt not rest the judgment of thy poor in his cause. Keep thee far from a false matter. A false matter. Taking something out of context and then coming up with some delusional fallacy in your own mind. Okay? A false matter. And the innocent and righteous slay thou not. Careful. For I will not justify the wicked. You will not justify the wicked. We're not to, supposed to be like the world. In the way we rebuke, in the way we walk, in the way we talk, in the way we handle things. Okay? Now, that's an introduction. Psalm 101, verse 1. I will sing of mercy and judgment unto thee, O Lord, will I sing. Amen. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. And what is he singing of? Mercy and judgment. God is a God of judgment. God is a God of mercy. He delighteth in mercy. He would much rather be merciful than to cast judgment. But because he is merciful, he is also a God of judgment. Okay, we have to remember that. And because of that, we sing. Praise the Lord for his judgment. Okay? When my, like, for example, my worst enemy, okay, I would not be glad at his calamities, but I would sing of the Lord's judgment upon him. Okay, I would be glad and rejoice in God's judgment, not the fact that the guy's suffering, okay, but rather that the Lord is righteous and is a God of judgment, okay? There is a difference there, okay? Remember, you're not God. Do remember that, okay? Hi, <laughs> okay? Verse 2, I will behave myself wisely in a perfect way. I will behave how you act, how you walk, how you talk. You know, having decorum. You claim to be of the church and the living God, but yet you're doing things as a wicked lost devil would do them. Hmm. But... I will behave myself wisely, wise, wisdom, the fear of the Lord, wisely, according to the scriptures, which is pertinent for you. Okay? I will behave myself wisely in a perfect way. What is this perfect way? Psalm 19. What is this perfect way? And the whole context of this explains it, but we're going, uh, not all verses, but uh, pretty much all of them. <laughs> okay, pretty much all of them, except the first one. Psalm 19, verses 7 on to verse 14. I will behave myself wisely in a perfect way. Psalm 19, verses 7 on to verse 14. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. This is written on uh, the Psalms, written in the dispensation under the law, okay? But the law of the Lord is perfect, okay? The law of the Lord is perfect, absolutely, flawless. You wanted to be right with God in the dispensation under the law, you had to do this, 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 and God would honor you for you doing what he said to do to be right with him, okay? We are not keeping the law today to be, sa to be saved, stay saved, or anything like that. We are saved by his grace, 
through our faith, okay? That's how we are saved today, okay? But nonetheless, the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. Where do you find the law of the Lord? In the scriptures, the authorized version of the scriptures, okay? The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. Where do you find the testimonies of the Lord? Within the scriptures, okay? The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. Again, ditto. Where do you find the statutes of the Lord? Within the scriptures, okay? The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. We get it, right? Okay? The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. Clean, because it cleanses you. It's like you read the scriptures, especially what's pertinent for you today in this dispensation, and you're like, oh boy, okay, Oh, I'm not the, all right. So I'm going to wash my <laughs> wash my hands of that and get away from it. Okay? All right? All right? The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. All together, the whole sandwich. Okay? More to be desired are they than gold. Yay! than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. The authorized version of the scriptures, what's it worth? It's priceless. That's why, you know, on a personal note, if you are to spend, drop 200 bucks on like a fine Cambridge edition of the scriptures, um, you know, one that's made of goat skin, um, th these Cambridge, unless you get the rare one that is defective, which does happen, but these, like this, this right here, this is the Cambridge, my very first Cambridge that I bought. This I bought in 2010, okay? And this, this is the one that has marks on every text, page of text, okay? Uh, you buy a Cambridge, you're going to be taking it with you to your grave. It's going, you know, you can level a rhinoceros with the Cambridge, okay? But I say all that, if you are to drop $200 on a Cambridge edition of the scriptures, remember, the scriptures are to, there to be used, not to be put in a box to be so held in reverence that you don't even use it, okay? Okay, that is actually, that's dangerous, the scriptures, okay, this one here, right here, was given to me as a gift, okay, $180 gift, but see, I use it, see, the scriptures are to be used, okay, so when you pay that type of money for a set of scriptures that's going to last forever, not, you know, not forever, but for your lifetime, it's worth it, why is that? More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. I can never get on to a brother or a sister who will tell me, it's like, oh, Brad, I, I spent $300 on a set of scriptures. Is it at Cambridge? Yeah. I can't get on, uh, on a brother or a sister. Now, if you got bills to pay and rent to pay and food to put under the table, take care of that first. If you got a little excess, that's fine. That's fine. But like I said, I can't, I, and I won't get on a brother. Th these are investments, okay? Buying the scriptures is an investment. We got scriptures throughout all this house that we give to people who need them, okay? We still do that. That's part of it, okay? But, okay, the overall, the overall price, the overall weight and worth and value of the scriptures is priceless. It's priceless. They weren't cheap to make. Uh, even a wicked devil brought up the, and this is very neat for devils to do this because they would know. Even a wicked devil made the comment, it's like for every page, something like millions of lives died. Uh, uh, for every page of scripture, Catholicism, has equaled it in millions of lives. And that came from a wicked coadjutor devil. Okay? Even they get that. Okay? Okay? Moreover by them is thy servant warned, scriptures, and in keeping of them there is great reward. 
You got to remember the dispensational difference here. But in doing it God's way today in this dispensation, it's going to work out well for you. I promise. I promise. And that's not me promising. That's the scriptures. Okay? Who can understand his errors? Cleanse thou me from secret faults. How would you know what an error is unless the scriptures tell you? Another man, the Lord can use another man, yes, and that's good, yes. But how, you know, how are we usually? We're pretty stubborn. We're pretty prideful, aren't we? If you say you're not, you lie, you lie, you lie, and that long-haired ghost is deceiving you, okay? <laughs> okay, you say you don't have pride, you're a liar. You're a liar, okay? The greatest of the church of the living God struggled with his pride. And you don't have a pride problem, you lie, and your breath stink, okay? And I could smell it all the way over here, okay? All right? So... Who can understand his errors? Our Lord can. Cleanse thou me from secret faults. How, wherewithal shall a young, man's young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word? What is that, Psalm 119? Beth, right? If I got that wrong, I will be corrected in the comment section. Praise the Lord, okay? Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. Well, I'm just doing as he's I, as he rewarded me. I'm going to do to him. Hey, they, hey, these King James Bible believing Christians, they do this. So why not I just do it, huh? A little doesn't hurt. Remember the rudiments of the world. Yeah, yeah. Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. How are, how is he going to do that? By keeping your nose in the scriptures, boy, daily. Okay. Let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright and shall be innocent from the great transgression. What is the great transgression? Departing from what God says. Departing from God. Period. Okay? Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Slandering a brother in Christ. An actual brother. Well, he's not a brother to me. Maybe he isn't a brother to you after all. Hmm? Maybe he isn't. Maybe he isn't a brother to you. But he is of the church of the living God. Hmm. You need to be really careful. You need to be... I need to be real careful. There are some people out there who are my brethren. Who I can't stand. And I gotta be. <laughs> if hey, if a brother who I can't stand would come to me in need, like show up, Brad. I I need a place to stay. Brad, I need a place to. I need some food. Brad, can you come? And I would do it, even though I don't like him. I would do it. Why? Because he's my brother. Okay. I might not like him, but I'm still gonna help him as my brother, regardless. Okay? Regardless. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Okay? Now, I will behave myself wisely in a perfect way. So what is this perfect way? Aligning your life with the scriptures and doing things according to the scriptures, especially what is pertinent for us in this dispensation. Or well, when wilt thou come unto me? I will walk within my house with a perfect heart. Here, you know what I learned today? Now, we as the church of God, the church of the living God, we recognize a perfect heart is a broken and a contrite heart, a heart that belongs to God. We recognize that. We acknowledge that, that a perfect heart is a heart that belongs to God and who does what he says and loves the Lord. But you know what's interesting? And check me out on this. As far as I was able to find this morning, perfect heart. Perfect heart does not appear within the New Testament. So does that mean that we're not, see, okay? 
I will behave myself wisely in a perfect way. What is a perfect way? Doing what the scripture says for us today in this dispensation. I will walk within my house. Oh, when wilt thou come unto me? I will walk within my house with a perfect heart. Okay? So a perfect heart within a perfect way. The way of the Lord is perfect. Okay? The law of the Lord is perfect. And Jesus Christ, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And what else does he say? Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. So you think about that now. Okay? I will behave myself wisely in a perfect way. In this dispensation, you had to keep the law to be saved, to be right with God. It was faith and works. Your faith was in that Lord, that the Lord will honor the works that you did to be right with him. Okay? Faith and works. Okay? But today... I will behave myself wisely in a perfect way. Jesus Christ, he is the way, okay? The truth and the life, okay? Oh, when wilt thou come unto me? When you come to him broken, contrite, and in fear of him, call upon his name, and he save you. I will walk within my house with a perfect heart. Like I said, within it, check me out. And if I'm wrong, put in the New Testament where it says, uh, Perfect heart together, like it says right there, uh, what you're looking at in verse 2. If I missed it in the New Testament, put it in the description box for me, please. I don't think I did, okay? But that's interesting. But about this perfect heart, First Kings, like I said, we recognize today that a perfect heart is a heart that belongs to the Lord, right? Absolutely. But in context to this, 1 Kings chapter 8, verses 57 on to verse 61. The Lord our God be with us. As he was, 1 Kings chapter 8, verses 57 on to verse 61. The Lord our God be with us as he was with our fathers. Let him not leave us nor forsake us, that he may incline our hearts unto him, that he may incline our hearts unto him, to walk in all his ways, and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments which he commanded our fathers. Dispensational difference. You had to keep the law in order to be saved, to be right with God within the dispensation of the law. We have covered that many times before. We're not going to get into it. Okay? But, okay, let's keep reading. And let these my words wherewith I have made supplication before the Lord be nigh unto the Lord our God day and night, that he may, may that he maintain the cause of his servant and the cause of his people Israel all at all times as the matter shall require. See, when you are walking uprightly, walking according to the scriptures, Okay? Even though sub, uh, persecution will come upon you, you're doing it God's way. You're going to be rewarded. It's when you deviate from what God has said for you to do in this dispensation. Uh, yeah, you're not going to lose your salvation. Yes, there are those who are of the church of the living God, which you couldn't tell him from a uh, uh, devil and uh, whatever. Yes, they're still going to go to heaven when they die. But yet their testimony is shot. Their witness is shot. They shame the Lord. Okay? They are, the honor of the Lord means nothing to them. They're still going to go to heaven, but they're useless. They're vain, okay? They're vain, even though they are saved. That is possible, yes. But see, in this dispensation, under the law, you have to keep the law, okay? But the point is, if you're doing the way God says, rightly divided the way God says, it will go well with you one way or another, Okay? That all the people of the earth may know that the Lord is God and that there is none else. Right here. Let your heart therefore be perfect with the Lord, our God, to walk in his statutes and to keep his commandments as at this day. So the perfect heart here in context that is being referenced is one that walks within a perfect way. And that's something. You learn something new every... Like I said, check me out within the New Testament. 
and find me where perfect heart, as in verse 2 in Psalm 101, appears in the New Testament. Show it to me, please. If I missed it, show it to me. Okay? Perfect heart, as it is written in uh, Psalm 101, verse 2. It doesn't appear that way, as far as I have seen. If I'm wrong, correct me in the comment section, please. Put it there, and I'll pin it for you. And I will I will answer you. Thank you for this correction and rebuke. I was wrong. I, I will, I'll take uh, responsibility for that, yes. But as far as I saw, it doesn't appear. Perfect heart together like that does not appear. Isn't that interesting? So that means that we shouldn't be, you know, then you get these guys so it's like, well, the letter killeth, that's talking about the law, okay? So that means that you you don't need the Bible. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You don't need a Bible. You need the scriptures. <laughs> you see the slithering ways that these people will go to justify their sins? Hmm. Isn't, that, isn't that interesting? Okay? So... Perfect heart. Today, a perfect heart is a broken, contrite heart that fears the Lord. That, and because remember, okay, Jesus Christ, he is the way and the truth and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by him, okay? And sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth, okay? This applies today, okay? You can have, can you have a perfect heart with the Lord today and not have anything to do with the written scriptures? No! No, you can't. No, you can't. How are you being fed? By your feelings? By your emotions? Give me a break. Give me a break. Okay? But And one more on this. Isaiah chapter 38. When King Hezekiah who was granted 15 extra years because he cried unto the Lord. <laughs> and within that 15 years, how do you explain the 15 years of grace given unto Hezekiah after he wept unto the Lord? One word. Manasseh. That's how you describe the 15 years that the Lord gave unto King Hezekiah when he wept unto the Lord. One word. How do you describe it? Manasseh. It's all needs to be said, okay? But Isaiah 38, verses 1 under verse 3. In those days was Hezekiah sick unto death. And Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amoz, came unto him and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. Then Hezekiah turned his face toward the wall and prayed unto the Lord and said, Remember now, O Lord, I beseech thee, how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart, and look at this, and have done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept sore. So a perfect heart is doing what God says. And we do what God says today out of love for God because he first loved us. You see how it ties in? Okay. One second, brethren. All right. See how that ties in like that? Sorry about that. Now let's look at verse 3. In Psalm 101, I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. Now, right away, what do we immediately think of? Don't watch Hollywood movies. Don't watch TV. You know, don't read pornographic things or look at or play them stupid video games. You don't do that stuff. You will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. But is that the extent of what putting wicked things before your eyes is? Hmm? What about if you're reading something that you shouldn't? Well, what about you, Brad? I, those I use to, if I read something like that, to help you, the Church of the Living God, to expose these things onto you, okay? But there again... Is wicked things before your eyes just relegated to television and video games? Hmm? Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 7. Deuteronomy chapter 7. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verses 25 on to verse 26. The graven images of their gods shall ye burn with fire. Thou shalt not desire the silver or gold that is on them, nor take it unto thee, lest thou be snared therein. For it is an abomination to the Lord thy God. 
So setting wicked things before thine eyes. You know, emulating could be a wicked thing. You see these people who dress a certain way. It's like, oh, well, you're putting... How is that a wicked thing? If they're dressed like, you know, these, these women, supposedly, who, dress, who wear a piece of dental floss with Band-Aids and then just wear a little, you know, and they walk out in public and you see them and it's like, oh! Or you lost men. You look at that and you look at them and then they yell at you for looking at them dressed as a harlot. Hmm. Neither shalt thou bring an abomination into thine house, lest thou be a cursed thing like it. But thou shalt utterly detest it, and thou shalt utterly abhor it, for it is a cursed thing. Hmm. I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes is not just relegated to television, internet, video games, movies, okay, billboards. It's deeper than just that. Because there are those out there who don't even engage in those things, but yet they're setting wicked things before their eyes. They're seeing things that they're not, that their eyes shouldn't be privy to. Okay? So it's a little bit deeper than that. Okay? Keep that in mind. Okay? I hate the work of them that turn aside. It shall not cleave to me. And see... Um, again, we're putting wicked things before your eyes, what happens? It can cleave to you. But see, not only thing, wicked things that you put before your eyes cleaves to you. I, to this day, still can hear and know the lyrics of Fear Factory. Okay? Napalm Death. Uh, okay? Obituary. Okay? The, what the, that's death metal, which I used to listen to, okay? It's, it's cleaves to you, okay? Wickedness cleaves to you as if it were dung on the bottom of your sandal, okay? Okay, but I will set no wicked thing before my eyes. And that includes you watching these videos by these coadjutor devils who do nothing but attack people. Okay? That's a way they're doing wickedly. And you setting that before your eyes? Okay? <laughs> and contrary to what some believe, I do not watch at all any of the videos that my dear godly Christian friends, yeah, make against me. I, I have not watched one of them. Not one. No, not one. Okay? Why? Because it's a wicked thing. I'm not setting it before my eyes. But I hate the work of them that turn aside. I hate the work of them that turn aside. We are to hate that which is evil and cleave to that which is good. We are to hate uh, them with a perfect hatred. Perfect hatred. Okay, here, let me write that down so I don't forget it. There will be a link in the uh, description and the thing. Perfect hate. i got to write this down or else I forget, okay? We are to hate them with a perfect hatred. If they are the enemies of our Lord, they are our enemies. Okay? Plain as day. But, Proverb 4. This turning aside. Moses turned aside to see. But that, that was a benefit. But you turn aside from the path. Because remember, broad is the way that leadeth to death. And narrow is the way that leadeth to life. Broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. Okay? Yes. Okay? But when, you're, when your eye is focused on the Lord, you're walking that narrow path. But see, you get a little diverted. You get that little glimmer from these guys in the side and you get diverted and then you go astray. I hate the work of them that turn aside. It doesn't say that you hate them. I hate the work of them. Someone who is of the Church of the Living God making slandering videos against a brother. I hate the work, not them, the work of them that turn aside. Proverbs 4, 23 unto 27. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. 
Put away from thee a froward mouth. We're going to be looking at that here in a little bit. And perverse lips put far from thee. We're going to be looking at what it means to be froward here in a little bit, okay? Uh, actually, in the next verse, okay? <laughs> All right? Let thine eyes look right on. Not get distracted by the boisterous winds, okay? And let thine eyelids look straight before thee. Ponder, think. Ponder the path of thy feet. Think upon, you know. And let all thy ways be established. Turn not to the right hand, nor to the left. Remove thy foot from evil. You're doing evil. Stop it. Stop it. Why aren't you going to them personally? Because they won't listen. It's vanity. Okay? And proven that they would take what you do out of love and twist it and turn it against you and attack you. Cast not your pearls before swine. See? Okay? Okay? So, those who turn aside, I hate the work of those that turn aside. It shall not cleave to me. I hate what you do. I hate what you're doing. Okay? It's not going to cleave to me. All right? And also, okay, this hate thing, go to uh, Amos chapter 5, okay? Amos chapter 5, a couple of one verse references here. Amos chapter 5, verse 15, okay? Hate the evil of the church of the living God. If you are doing exactly what these slander attack channels do, you're doing what is evil. Okay? Hate the evil and love the good. And establish judgment in the gate. I'm doing judgment. You're not God. You're not God. It may be that the Lord God of hosts will be gracious unto the remnant of Joseph. Hmm. Hate the evil and love the good. But we're to love everybody. When the Lord said that, it was in context of the kingdom of heaven. Which is not now. It's coming. Okay? But, okay? Okay, well, we're supposed to love everybody today, right? Romans chapter 12. One, we're going to be in Romans chapter 12 a few times today. You will see. Romans chapter 12. Just one verse to start here. Romans chapter 12, verse 9. <laughs> Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor. Abhor is extreme hatred. Not just hatred, but extreme hatred. Wherefore, I abhor myself and repent in dust and ashes. Okay? Getting back to your roots, if you could say. Okay? Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. Okay? Cleave to that which is good. Jesus Christ, he is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by him. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Okay? The scriptures is the actual only physical remnant that we have of God that we can cling to. The physical. Unless you're charismatic coming up with all these wacky signs and wonder things. Yeah. Okay? And Psalm 97, another verse. Okay? Psalm 97, one verse thing, okay? Psalm 97, just one verse, if I can get there. Psalm 97, here, we'll do it this way, okay? Psalm 97, <laughs> verse 10. <laughs> Ye that love the Lord, hate evil. Not only in others, but especially when it's in yourself. He preserveth the souls of his saints. He delivereth them out of the hand of the wicked. Now see, we expect these people, like these co coadjutor devil channels, that all they do is attack people, bring up the past, 
as though they are they're not they're not saved all they do is attack they can't teach they're inept they are, are not capable they why because they have not the spirit of god within them they have that spirit of antichrist within them they they're lost they're they're not saved we expect it's like you know when these certain channels out there when they do what they do it's that's they're devils they're lost that's what they're supposed to do okay it's like, you know, I, it's, you can't get mad at a dog for smelling its own behind because that's what dogs do. Satanic coadjutors of the Vatican, devil, so-called trying to be infiltrators who do nothing but attack and slander, they're dogs smelling their own rear end. That's what they do, okay? You can't. You know, that's what they do. That's what they're here to do. You know, like, okay, Lamentations chapter 4, verses 18 and 19. Okay, this is what we expect from the devils, from the coadjutors, from these infiltrating Christians. Okay, this is what we expect from them. Okay, they're dogs smelling their own rear end. That's what dogs do. This is what they do. Okay? Uh, Lamentations 4, 18 and 19. They hunt our steps. That we cannot go in our streets. Our end is near. Our days are fulfilled. Our end is come. Yeah, our end is come. We're getting out of here sometime soon. When? I don't know. But sooner or later, the redemption of the purchased possession is going to happen. Okay? And as far as the building the temple now, I'm very... Uh, Mm. Anyway, anyway, I did read that, by the way. I hope you didn't get it from who I thought you did, but I, I did I did look at it. I did look at it, okay? Our persecutors are swifter than the eagles. Eagle is an unclean bird of heaven. Yeah, they are really swift. They run. You know, the false prophet, they run. You know, I have not sent these prophets, but yet they ran. Okay? Yeah. Our persecutors are swifter than the eagles of heaven. They pursued us upon the mountains. They laid wait for us in the wilderness. Yeah. And they lay wait so they can say, Aha! Aha! Okay? We, this is what we expect from these devils. And go back to Proverbs 4. Okay? This is what they do. Okay? I cannot and will not, even though they irritate me quite often... I can't hold it against them, these devils, because that's what you guys do. This is what you're calling in life, is to attack people. No edification. No exhoration. But no, just slinging dung and attacking people, dredging up the past. That's all you guys do. And... I would ask you, how does that make you feel? But you say, I feel bright. <laughs> Good for you. But that's all you do. But see, that, that's what you do. That's what you do. As the dog returns to his vomit, that's what you do. See, that, we expect this from these people, brethren. Okay, uh, Pro uh, Proverbs 4, 16 and 17. For they sleep not, except they have done mischief. And their sleep is taken away unless they cause some to fall. Being, oh, see, they hunt our steps, and they are swifter than eagles, okay? They lay wait for us. Uh, they lay wait. Obsessed. That, that's the creepy part. That's the creepy part of these people who are obsessed with you. There are, unfortunately, a couple that are obsessed with me. That, ugh, that's disgusting. That is disgusting. That is really disgusting. And this obsession that they have with the godly, with those who are of the church of the living God, is very perverse. Very perverse. Mm. Why is that? For they eat the bread of wickedness, you know, the wafer cookie, and drink the wine of violence. They work for the Vatican. Our enemies. Okay? Isn't that something? But like I said, this is what they do. That is their whole purpose in life. We're going to be in the Proverbs here for a little bit. Uh, Proverbs 16 now. This, see, and if you're of the church of the living God, obsessing like that, 
Burde, whoa, time out. Take a breath, take a step back, and be like, whoa, something not right here. Okay? Take some inventory, take a chill, back off because what you're doing is evil. No matter how you try to twist scripture to justify it, what you're doing is evil. Okay? Proverbs 16, 27 on to verse 30. Okay? An ungodly man diggeth up evil. Ungodly people, this is what they do. Okay? Oh, I can think of three from all over the world, up north and overseas. I can think of many that do this, even in my own nation. But, see, this is what they do. I don't fault you devils because you're doing what your father the devil would have you to do. Okay? I don't fault you because this is what your call in life is, to go after the godly. <sighs> yeah. Okay? An ungodly man diggeth up evil, and in his lips there is as a burning fire. A froward, we're, we're going to look at this, a froward man soweth strife. And a whisperer, A, separateth chief friends. And praise the Lord for that, actually. You did me a favor, A. <laughs> you really did. <laughs> uh, but, I, and I know guys like this, whisperers, you know, whisperers, who try to separate chief friends. A violent man enticeth his neighbor and leadeth him into the way that is not good. He shutteth his eyes to devise froward things, moving his lips. He or she bringeth evil to pass. Like I said, we expect these things in the devils. But to see it coming from someone of the Church of the Living God, apparently, that's... You need to take take heed. You need to take heed. Okay? Proverbs 20, 17 on to verse 19. Yeah, these are just basic. Okay? There is so much more we can get into when we're talking about the behavior of these devils. Okay? But Proverbs 20, verses 17 on to verse 19. Bread of deceit is sweet to a man. Sounds so good at first, doesn't it? Oh, they're so pious and righteous at first, right? Yeah, yeah. But afterwards, his mouth shall be filled with gravel. Every purpose is established by counsel, and with good advice make war. He that goeth about as a tale-bearer, okay, revealeth secrets, he that goeth about as a talebearer revealeth secrets. Talebearer. Telling tales, lies, or sharing things that they at one time were privy to know uh, through relationships. But when the relationship goes sour, then they take that stuff and twist it and turn it against you as a means of attack. See, those are tactics of devils. Are you looking at me? Those are tactics of devils. What's wrong with you? Oh, but you're going to hide behind your stigma of whatever it is that you're using this as an excuse. You go out to do evil, and then when called on it, you revert back to this? To hide behind that? Kind of like a dark implant? Hmm. 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 He that goeth about as a tale bearer revealeth secrets. Therefore meddle not with him that flattereth with his lips. And I wrote this down again to be looked at again, I think, somewhere else. Um, which uh, I'll, I'll remember when we get there. <laughs> okay. But, like I said, these are things that we expect. From the devils, not from those of us who are of the Church of the Living God. And when you see this happening in someone who is apparently of the Church of the Living God, that gives you a cause for concern. 
and you are to go to these people privately, yes, but when two or more witnesses have testified to you and it doesn't work, Proverbs 23, 6, on to verse 8. Eat not the bread of him that hath an evil eye, neither desire thou his dainty meats. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. As he thinketh in his heart. I'm, I'm saved because I think I am. I'm a, I'm a good person. I'm not as so-and-so. I'm holy and righteous. I never mess up. As he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, saith he to thee. Oh, here, I'm going to give this to you because I love you. But his heart is not with thee. And I've run into this. People who were kind to us before in the past, and then they've twisted it and use it as a thing of a leverage point. Okay? that That's, you know, that's disturbing. I've done so much for you. I didn't ask you. Okay. I thought you were my friend. I thought you you cared. I thought you wanted to, you know, whatever. But no, you use it as a thing of uh, of an embankment to rest back on or something like that. And the fact that people will do that, it, it's just wow. Wow. That shows a deeper zeal for evil. That when they are willing to put forth their sus substance in order to gain a moment, a thing of leverage to use as an attack on someone. That, that shows the depth of evil that some of these people are at. It really does. It really does. The morsel which thou hast eaten shalt thou vomit up and lose thy sweet words. Amen. Amen. Now see... Those are things that we expect from the lost, from the wicked, from the coadjutors. Like I said, I don't fault my enemies one bit because they're doing what their father, the devil, would have them to do. That, that's what they do. That's their whole thing in life. Perverse, obsessed devils who just sling dirt and can't do anything else. That's what you guys do. And it's okay because that's what you're here to do. Okay? That's it. Okay? But like I said... Romans chapter 12, okay? We're not supposed to be like that, brethren, okay? There is a time and place for every purpose under the heaven. Yes, there is! But we're not just supposed to do it like those who call themselves Christians and use tactics of devils. Okay? Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. Uh, what, what did I have written up here? <laughs> yes, verses 17 on to verse 21. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. But when you go about as a talebearer looking to start strife and to cause stuff, are you trying to dwell in peace? No, you're not. You're trying to cause strife and to have everybody pay attention to you while doing it. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves. In your little brain, you think you've been wronged, okay? Leave it to the Lord and leave it alone. But you can't do that, can you? You've just got to get even. Hey, hey, I'm guilty of that too. But it's wrong. Why? But rather give place unto wrath, and you're not the one to take that place for the wrath. Okay? For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. Okay? And <laughs> if you think you are the vehicle for God's judgment, you need to consider of what spirit you are first. Here, I'm going to be prideful. Understand? Understand? 
Therefore, if thine enemy... You, you, brother, you were going to put this in the comment section. Bless your heart. And so, before you get to this point, you probably will. But, eh? Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Overcome evil with good. We are supposed to be different. We are not supposed to utilize the same tactics that the heathen, lost, coadjutor devils do. Okay? We're supposed to be different. And if you're doing them the way the devils are doing them, that's a cause for concern. Okay? Big cause for concern. All right. Now, let's go to verse 4 in Psalm 101. A froward heart shall depart from me. Now pay attention. I will not know a wicked person. What does froward mean? Look at that context right there. Now we've already looked at some occurrences of froward. But look at the verse right there. Look at the verse, not at me. Okay? A froward heart shall depart from me. I will not know a wicked person. So someone who has a froward part is associated to being what? A wicked person. And what are we supposed to do with someone who has a froward heart? Get away from me. Cut it off. Which I have done. Okay? But froward. Deuteronomy chapter 32. Deuteronomy chapter 32. You can look in Webster's 1828 Dictionary. I recommend Webster's 1828 Dictionary. Learn first to look, in, especially with words within Scripture, learn first to utilize first mention. Learn first to look at context of the word that you're looking at within Scripture. Excuse me. Like I said, I recommend Webster's 1828 Dictionary. I use Webster's 1828 Dictionary. Amen. But let not that be the first option. Scripture defines itself. Learn first how to define words within Scripture. And if there is still a question, use Webster's as an afterthought, not as the primary. Okay? Not as the primary. All right? Like I said, use what I use it. You've seen it in videos, and I will use Webster's 1828 Dictionary in videos. Yes, I will. But first, search the scriptures for definition. Okay. Then, go. Mr. Webster was not infallible. He was fallible. He botched it on several occasions. Recompense. I re rest my case. Okay. Recompense with an S or with a C. In God's word, there's distinction between the two. One is a noun, one is a verb. Mr. Webster has only with an S. Things that are different are not. See what one little letter can do? Mr. Webster botched it on that. Okay? But, Deuteronomy chapter 32, verses 15 on to verse 20. Froward. Okay? Now, look at that verse again, verse 4. A froward heart. Froward heart as opposite to a perfect heart. One that does what the Lord says. Who loves the Lord. Who is dependent on the Lord. Okay? But a froward heart is associated right away we see in that verse with what? A wicked person. Deuteronomy 32 verses 15 on to verse 20. First appearance. But Jeshron waxed fat and kicked. Thou art waxen fat. Thou art grown thick. Thou art covered with fatness. Well favored, Jeshua. And when well favored, then he forsook God which made him and lightly esteemed the capital R, rock of his salvation. See, becoming self-sufficient is dangerous. Especially when it comes from the Lord. We need to be Christ-dependent. And see, through the blessings of the Lord, you can abound. But you got to be careful in that abundance because then you'll start thinking that you are self-sufficient or take things for granted. Okay? Got to be careful. So, right away we see the mention of Jeshurun. Okay? 
They provoked him to jealousy with strange gods. So provoking to jealousy with strange gods. With abominations provoked they him to anger. So provoking the Lord to anger by going after something that is not him. Okay? Okay? They sacrificed unto devils, not to God. They, they want both sides. They want the good and the evil. There is no gray area. Okay? They sacrifice unto devils. They give their time unto devils. In this dispensation, there were those who were actually killing animals unto devils. But we cannot have fellowship with devils and the Lord. Okay? There's no option C. There is no gray area. It's either or, like we've talked about before. Okay? But there are those out there who sacrifice to devils. You want a good example today of how people sacrifice to devils? By doing what they think God who appeared to them says for them to do. That's a good example of sacrifice. You're sacrificing yourself unto a devil. Okay? Sacrificing unto devils. Giving money to church buildings. <laughs> you know, it says, if you give unto the rich, you will become poor, something like that. Brother, put that verse in the description box, please. Uh, okay? Yeah? Consider that? Okay? So, provoking and sacrificing unto other gods. They sacrifice unto devils, not to God. To gods, little g, whom they knew not. To new gods that came newly up, whom your fathers feared not. Okay? Of the rock, capital R, that begat thee, thou art unmindful, and hast forgotten God that formed thee. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. And the fool says in his heart, there is no God. Okay? Oh, they did, there is a God, there is a God. A God that you have made of your new gods that come newly up. Not the God of the scriptures. Hmm. Okay? And the Lord saw, saw it, and, and when the Lord saw it, he abhorred, extreme hate, abhorred them because of the provoking, there you see provoking again, of his sons and of his daughters. And he said, I will hide my face from them. So, okay, what do we see? We see provoking the Lord. And those who are provoking the Lord sacrifice unto devils, not to God. Okay, and are unmindful of God, professing themselves to be wise, but they became fools. Okay, hence, and when the Lord saw it, he abhorred them because of the provoking of his sons and of his daughters. And he said, I will hide my face from them. I will see what their end shall be. Okay, now, hold on. Today in this dispensation, when you come to the Lord truly on his terms, broken, contrite, and in fear of the Lord, in fear of the Lord, call upon him and he save you. You are eternally secure. Okay? But see, what he can do is hand you over to the destruction of the flesh that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. Okay? Okay? Dispensational difference. But, for they are a very froward generation. Children in whom is no faith. But see, these Christians, they have faith. In, they do have faith. In the God of their own making, in new gods that spring newly up, and a God who is just like them, their bro, right? Or a God who appears to them. Okay? Okay? So their faith is not in the true God. So, so, a forward generation. If froward heart shall depart from me, I will not know a wicked person. Right away we know froward is what? Wicked. Froward is also linked with those who what? Provoke the Lord. We also know that being froward is someone who sacrifices unto devils, not to God. Okay? Okay? So with being froward, number one, we know it's wicked. Number two, we know it involves a provoking of the Lord. Number two, we know also that it deals with uh, sacrificing unto devils, not to God. And we also know that it means an unmindfulness of God who made thee. And whether you're saved or not, 
God made you live with it. You're gonna you're gonna give an account to Him, whether either at the judgment seat of Christ for us who are saved, or at the great white throne for like all you devil coagitors. Okay. Okay. So we see these things involved with forwardness. Okay. Now go to Psalm 18. Psalm 18. Okay. To get our give ourselves uh, a an idea of what it is to be forward. And when someone who is of, apparently of the church of the living God acting with a forward heart, doing things like the wicked do, that that's a cause for concern. It's a cause for concern. Okay? Psalm 18, 22 on to verse 27. For all his judgments were before me, and I did not put away his statutes from me. I was also upright before him. And kept myself from mine iniquity. So see, the contrast to someone who is forward is what? For all his judgments were before me, and I did not put away his statutes from me. His judgments are before you. And you don't put away his statutes and leave them in a box on a shelf and rarely read them because they're too holy to be handled. Okay, hey, 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 hey. I, I'm... I'm I understand if you're someone of the church of the living God and you don't want to do that to your set of scriptures, I get it. But to get to a point where you don't even want to go into the physical scriptures because they're too holy for you, the scriptures were there. See, that's the whole thing about the oldest and best manuscript lie of the Jesuits. Nobody used Sinaiticus and Vaticanus. The manuscripts that were used of the Church of the Living God that come from Syria, uh, they were used. They wore out. See? You see? There to be the scriptures. Uh, yeah. Pay. Get a $300 Cambridge. Use it. Use it. Okay? Use it, man. Woman. Use it. Come on now. All right? Oh, that's me being prideful. Yeah. 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 But see, the contrast here in what we're looking at, at in Psalm 18, in verses 22 and 23. Hmm. Verse 24. Therefore hath the Lord recompensed me with an S. With me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands in his sight. With the merciful, thou wilt shew thyself merciful. With an upright man, thou wilt shew thyself upright. With the pure, thou wilt shew thyself pure. And with the froward, thou wilt shew thyself froward. Hmm. Vengeance is his. He will repay, saith the Lord. You are not God. It is not up to you to do judgment as God would do it. Yes, we are to judge. Yes, we are. But the judgment that comes from God, say the destruction of the wicked or a um, chastening, which comes from the Lord personally, if you take it upon yourself and taking the place of God, no, see, we are to judge. We are to judge. We are to judge. But remember, the judgment that comes from God is from God and not from you. Okay? Remember, you're not God. Okay? But see, with the froward, the Lord will shoo himself forward. And we've already kind of looked at what it means to be forward, haven't we? Okay? And go ahead now, back to the Proverbs. Back to the Proverbs. Or Proverbs, whatever you want to say. Back to the Proverbs. Proverbs 2. Proverbs 2. Okay? Proverbs chapter 2, verses 10 on to verse 17. When wisdom entereth into thine heart, when wisdom, fear of the Lord, entereth into thy heart, and knowledge is pleasant unto thy soul. You can have knowledge but have no wisdom. Okay? When you fear the Lord, knowledge he'll give you through the scripture. Okay? And what is pleasant unto thy soul? Discretion shall preserve thee. Understanding shall keep thee. Are you showing discretion and understanding by slandering a brother? Well, he's not my brother. Maybe he isn't your brother. Maybe he isn't. But he is of the church of the living God. Hmm? Maybe he isn't your brother. My brother. Brother to all of those of the church of the living God. Maybe not just to you, huh? That ought to scare you. 
And I hope it does. Okay? To deliver thee from the way of the evil man. From the man that speaketh forward things. Forward things? Huh? Provoking? Forgetting the Lord? Sacrificing unto devils? Wickedness? Hmm? Slandering? That kind of stuff? Ah. Who leave... Who leave the paths of uprightness to walk in the ways of darkness. If you want a verse right there to rebuke you for doing the things the way that these devils do, there you go. There you go. Vengeance belongs unto the Lord, not to you. Okay? We're not supposed to do it the way they are. If you got a problem with a brother, you leave it up to the Lord. Okay? You leave it up to the Lord. If he's going to use you as your as his vessel of judgment, as to speak something or to rebuke, you need to first know what spirit, what manner of spirit you are of. That's where it starts. And if you're doing things that you ought not, okay? But see, being forward, leaving who leave the paths of uprightness to walk in the ways of darkness. To do things that the devils do the way they do them. It's not good. It's not good, my friend. Who rejoice to do evil, like all these coadjutors do. And delight in the forwardness of the wicked. Forwardness of the wicked. So there you see wickedness and wicked, uh, wickedness and to be wicked associated with forward. Okay? And forwardness being forward. Okay? Whose ways are crooked, and they and they forward in their paths, to deliver thee from the strange woman, even from the stranger which flattereth with her words, which for, which forsaketh the guide of her youth. And forgetteth, and forgetteth the covenant of her God. Forward. Forward. A uh, couple of one verse references. Uh, Proverbs 3. Uh, what was that? Proverbs 3, verse 32. Proverbs 3, verse 32. The forward is abomination to the Lord. But, the, but his secret is with the righteous. Being forward is an abomination to the Lord. Okay? Proverbs 8, verse 13. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogancy, and the evil way, and the forward mouth do I hate. I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. It shall not cleave to me. It shall, excuse me, it shall not cleave to me. You need to be careful. You need to be careful. You need to be careful. Uh, Proverbs 11, verse 20. They that are of a forward heart are an abomination to the Lord, but such as are upright in their way are his delight. If you're slandering a brother in Christ, you are not upright in your way. You need to be cautious. Well, he's not my brother. Maybe he isn't your brother. Maybe he isn't. I suggest to you that you take some time and take some inventory of yourself. Even though the Lord may be using you. The way you are going is evil. Repent. Repent. That's all we can do for you is hope that you repent. Okay? Now, let's go to verse 5 in Psalm 101. Whoso privily slandereth his neighbor, him will I cut off.
Him that hath an high look and a proud heart will not I suffer. Proverbs 11, while we're here, verse 13. A talebearer revealeth secrets. <laughs> but he that is a faithful spirit concealeth the matter. You know, I have dirt on a specific evil devil who, if I were to use it, he would go immediately for doxing and stuff like that, even though he would do that same thing to me. I'm not going to do that, okay? Even though I could do the same thing that these devils do, and they wouldn't hesitate to do it on to us, but if we to do it, they would say, hey, that's doxing. Um, I'm still not going to do it, okay? I'm still not going to do it. Why? Because we're supposed to be different. We're supposed to be different. Okay? Uh, uh, Proverbs 20, 19. I think we already looked at this. Yes, we did. So we're, we're not going to look at that. Uh, Proverbs 26. Yes. Proverbs 26. 20. One verse. <laughs> Proverbs 26. The fool's proverb. Hmm. Proverbs 26, 20. Where no wood is. There the fire goeth out. So where there is no tail, tail bearer, the strife ceaseth. You're putting wood on the fire to cause strife. That's all you're doing. That's all you're doing. Okay? You made a hint of it publicly to begin your slander campaign. And what you are doing right now is putting wood on a fire to keep it going to slander a brother. This is exactly what you're doing. Okay? Stop. Please. Please. Please stop. Please stop. And, okay, whoso privily slandereth his neighbor, him will I cut off. Him that hath an high look and a proud heart, will not I suffer. Jeremiah chapter 9. Jeremiah chapter 9. Jeremiah chapter 9. Like I said, putting this together was a rebuke to me too. Okay? This is also for me too. Okay? Jeremiah 9, verses 1 on to verse 8. Oh, that my, heads, my head were at. Oh, that my head were waters, and mine eyes as fountain of tears. And mine eyes a fountain of tears that I might weep day and night for the slain of the daughter of my people. Oh, that I had in the wilderness a lodging place of wayfaring men, that I might leave my people and go from them. For they be all adulterers, an assembly of treacherous men. And they bend their bows like, and they bend their tongues like their bow for lies. Bend. Taking something that is true and twisting it with your own little thing in order to slander and to put wood on the fire to cause strife. Taking something that is true and twisting it. That's what these devils are good at. Okay, That's why uh, when you see people who do these kind of things that the devils do, you got to be like, oh, wow, wow. And these people save things like that in order to be used in the future. They heap together these things so that they have these aha moments. See, those are something that Jesuit people, that Jesuits do. Okay? You can be using the tactics of a Jesuit and not be, the, be a Jesuit too. You got to remember. But see, those are Jesuitical type tactics. Okay? And they bend their tongues like their bows for lives, but they are not valiant for the truth upon the earth. For they proceed from evil to evil, and they know not me, saith the Lord. And unfortunately, this is very true for us today. Take ye heed every one of his neighbor, and trust ye not in any brother. For every brother will utterly supplant, and every neighbor will walk with slanders. And they will deceive every one his neighbor, and will not speak the truth. They have taught their tongue to speak lies and weary themselves to commit iniquity. 
Thine habitation is in the midst of deceit. Through deceit, they refuse to know me. Seth, the Lord, through deceit, they refuse to know me. I know I saw the Lord. I know the Lord appeared to me. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. It's contrary to scripture. Okay? No, he didn't. The Lord had me to do it. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. Therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, Behold, I will melt them and try them. For how shall I do for the daughter of my people? Their tongue is as an arrow shot out. It speaketh deceit. One speaketh peaceably to his neighbor with his mouth, but in heart he layeth his weight. And I've encountered this oh so many times. My own fault too. Because I give people chances who I shouldn't. Okay. Whoso privily, privily slandereth his neighbor, him will I cut off. Him that hath a high look and a proud heart, will not I suffer. Okay. And also, too, let's, let's look at the uh, New Testament thing here. Go to 2 Thessalonians. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verses 6 unto verse 11. Now we command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye withdraw yourselves from every brother that walketh disorderly and not after the tradition which he received of us. For yourselves know how ye ought to follow us. For we behave not ourselves disorderly among you. Disorderly among you behaved. So if someone who is a brother is behaving as a lost person, Talk to them. It's like, hey, brother, sister, don't do that. They won't hear you. Okay. Then you have to pursue other options. Ultimately, you have to cut them off. Okay? Neither did we eat... Uh, okay, yeah. Neither did we eat any man's bread for naught, but wrought with labor and travail night and day, that we might not be chargeable to any of you. Not because we have not power. They had power. But they didn't use it. Why? But to make ourselves an ensample, I love that word, unto you to follow us. For even when we were with you, this we commanded you, that if any would not work, neither should he eat. For we hear that there are some which walk among you disorderly, working not at all, but are busy bodies. 1 Timothy chapter 5 Verses 13 on to verse 15. And with all they learn to be idle, wandering about from house to house, and not only idle, but tattlers also, and busybodies, speaking things which they ought not. I will therefore that the younger women marry, bear children, guide the house, Give none occasion to the adversary to speak reproachfully. For some already, for some are already turned aside after, after Satan. I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. Turn not to the right hand nor to the left. Remove thy foot from evil. Okay? And, we'll, and uh, skip down to verses 14 and 15. And if any man obey not our word by this epistle, note that man and have no company with him that, me, that he may be ashamed. Yet count him not as an enemy, but admonish him as a brother. And see, that's the thing. There's no admonition as a brother. If someone is of the church of the living God and in sin and you have to break fellowship with them, you don't treat them as your enemy. Unless they prove you to prove to be not of the church of the living God, that's a different story. Then they're a coadjutor, an infiltrator. Go at them! Go at them! Go at them! But see, your basis for proof is, be, is you twisting something that you understand nothing of. And you don't want to either. 
Because you're right, right? You got to be right. Got to get even. Just can't let things go. Just can't let it go, can you? Just can't let it go. Just can't let these things go, can you? No. You just, I just had to say, no, you didn't. No, you didn't. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 16, on to verse 19. Hmm. Yeah, verse 5 in Psalm 101, Him that hath an high look and a proud heart will not I suffer. Proverbs 6, verse 16 on to verse 19. <laughs> These six things doth the Lord hate. Yea, seven are an abomination unto him. A proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood, and heart that deviseth Wicked imaginations coming up with wicked things out of your own head. Okay? Feet that be swift in running to mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among brethren, which is exactly what you're trying to do. Which is exactly what some and go to Matthew chapter 10. A little instruction in righteousness for us here. Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10, verses 16, on to verse 23. Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10. It is hot in here. <laughs> Praise the Lord. As you can see, the sheen on my bald head. Matthew chapter 10, verses 16, on to verse 23. Matthew chapter 10, verses 16, on to verse 23. Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves, be ye therefore wise as serpent, be not ignorant of his devices, and harmless as doves. Okay? Vengeance is not ours, it belongs to the Lord. But beware of men, mere men. For they will deliver you up to the councils, and they will scourge you in their synagogues. <laughs> yeah, John 16. <laughs> yeah, John 16, anybody? <laughs> John, hold your place there, go to John 16. That hint to go to John 16, 1 on to verse 3. These things have I spoken unto you, that ye should not be offended. They shall put you out of the synagogues, yea, the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth God's service. And these things will they do unto you, because they have not known the Father nor me. Let's go back to Matthew chapter 10, picking up at verse 18, okay? And ye shall be brought before governors and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them and the Gentiles. But when they deliver you up, take no thought how or what ye shall speak. For it shall be given you in the same hour what ye shall speak. For it is not, for it is not ye that speak, but the Spirit of your Father which speaketh in you. Speaketh in you. Notice it said, does not say dwelleth in you. Speaketh in you. Okay? Why? Because this was said during a different dispensation. In the collection of books of the New Testament, yes, but did Christ Jesus die, bury, and rise again the third day according to the scriptures yet? But no. Okay, so continue. And the brother shall deliver up the brother to death, and the father the child, and the children shall rise up against their parents, and cause them to be put to death. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. Dispensational difference here. But he that endureth to the end shall be saved. We don't have to endure to the end to anything to be saved. During the time of Jacob's trouble, you have to endure to the end to be saved. Okay? Context. Context here. Okay? Okay? We today do not endure to the end to be saved. We're once saved, always saved. Absent from the body, present with the Lord. Okay? He's talking about a different dispensation not pertinent for today. Enduring to the end. In Matthew chapter 24, he who endures to the end, the same will be saved. It's talking about the time of Jacob's trouble. You have to endure to the end to be saved. Okay? In the time of Jacob's trouble, you have to endure to the end to be saved. Okay? Not today. All right? Okay, you, you, you understand that? Okay? But when they persecute you in this city, flee ye into another. For verily I say unto you, ye shall not have gone over the cities of Israel till the Son of Man be 
come. Okay? And the Son of Man become. When he came into Jerusalem riding on an ass, the foal of an ass, okay? Ass is a female. Um, what was it? Uh, mule is a male. Ass is the female, okay? But he fulfilled that to see the Son of Man come. There are some of you that will not taste of death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom when he rode into Jerusalem, okay? That's where they twist that to say that there are immortals walking amongst us right now, but, okay? But, yeah. Ye shall not have gone over the cities of Israel till the Son of Man be come. Son of Man was right there. What is he talking about? When he rode into Jerusalem. Okay? That's what he's talking about. All right? Now, let's look at verse 6. See, we're supposed to be different. We're not supposed to be like these Christian coadjutor devils. Okay? We're not supposed to be like that. We're not supposed to be ignorant of Satan's devices, but we're not supposed to be like that. Okay? Verse 6. Mine eyes shall be upon the faithful of the land. They that, that they may dwell with me. He that walketh in a perfect way, he shall serve me. Now, perfect way, which we already looked at in this context. Okay, perfect way. Walking according to the scriptures. Okay? Walking according to the scriptures. All right? And for this, go back to Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. Okay? Romans chapter 12, verses 10 on to verse 16. Be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love. In honor, preferring one another. I prefer to spend time with my brethren, not with lost people. Okay? Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Rejoicing in hope, Patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer, distributing to the necessity of saints, given to hospitality. Bless them which persecute you. Bless and curse not. Bless them by telling them the truth. Okay? Rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep. Be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. Be not wise in your own conceits. Some of you right now are wise in your own conceits. I was being wise in my own conceit. I repent of it. Okay? I do. You gotta be careful. You gotta be careful. And of course, go to Psalm 34. Psalm 34. We're supposed to be different. We're supposed to be different. You got a problem with a brother? Leave it up to the Lord. You go about slandering a brother? I want nothing to do with you. I want nothing to do with you. I'm sorry. You're wrong. You're out of line. You're out of order. And you're lying. You're taking what is truth and twisting it by wicked imaginations. Okay? Psalm 34, 11 on to verse 16. Okay? Oh, before we read that, verse 6 again in Psalm 101. Mine eyes shall be upon the faithful of the land, that they may dwell with me. He that walketh in a perfect way, he shall serve me. Psalm 34, verses 11 on to verse 16. Look at this. Come, ye children, hearken unto me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. What man is he that desireth life and liveth many days that he may see good? Keep thy tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking guile. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. Are you seeking peace? Are you seeking war? Mm. Yeah. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous and his ears are open unto their cry. The face of the Lord is against them that do evil, to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. Now, 
This is the only rebuke. This is the last rebuke that some of you are ever going to get. Because Proverbs 26.12. Proverbs 26.12. Verse 7 in Psalm 101. He that worketh deceit shall not dwell within my house. He that telleth lies shall not tarry in my sight. Galatians chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2. Verses 1 on to verse 5. Then 14 years after I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas and took Titus with me also. I went up by revelation and communicated unto them that, that gospel which I preached among the Gentiles, but privately to them which were of reputation, lest by any means I should run or had run in vain. Paul's like, okay, hey guys, come on. Am I doing this in vain? All right? No, no, no. But neither Titus, who was with me, being a Greek, was compelled to be circumcised. And that because of false Brethren, unawares, brought in. What does that mean? That these people put on a good facade, put on a good shoe, had the right testimony, believed and spake of the right doctrines. But over time, whoa, 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 what you talking doesn't match up with the way you walk it doesn't match the behavior. We fall. We make mistakes. But when it becomes a constant, but see, but see, and that, because of false brethren, unawares, brought in. These people infiltrated. And they got in because they put on it. They, they were. They're actors. They deserve Academy Awards. Okay? who came in privily to spy out our liberty, which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us into bondage. It's, it's a form of bondage to behave as these satanic coadjutors. It's a form of bondage. They're in bondage because all they can do is attack and sling mud. They cannot encourage. They cannot, um, they can't edify. They're relegated to one thing, but that's what they do. So don't fault them for doing as their father Satan would have them to do. That's what they do. Okay? Okay? But of these whom seem to be somewhat, whatsoever they were, it maketh no matter to me. God accepteth no man person. No man God accepteth no man's person, except when God appears to you personally, right? Or you get the privilege to go to hell and call in the name of the Lord like Jonah did. Or come on. Come on, wake up and smell the coffee, okay? <clears throat> For they who seem to be somewhat in conference added nothing to me. Nothing to me. Cut them off. Cut them off. And, of course, Titus chapter 3. You know, I some people have brought up to me about how His Holiness, Mr. Denlinger, would go after Stephen Anderson, okay? Um, I don't want to hear about that, about that man, so, okay? So, well, Brian Denlinger goes after Mr. Yeah, good for you, good for him, okay? Good for him. Uh, Stephen Anderson is so obvious that uh, Ray Charles could see it, okay? I understand why he did such, but, you know... I understand, but, you know, there are those have brought up to me in the past about, you know, they, they justify what they're doing, slandering and slinging mud um, by what His Holiness Mr. Denlinger does. Hey, at least His Holiness attempts to edify, to encourage. At least he does that. You guys who want to excuse your behavior by what His Holiness Mr. Denlinger does, you don't do that. All you do is what he does in slinging mud and attacking people. He at least 
attempts to edify, to instruct, to encourage. You devils. It's like, well, Brian Nenlinger does it. Yeah, but all you do is attack. At least, at least, His Holiness attempts to edify and encourage and strengthen people. At least he does that. You devils, you don't. So go pound some sand. Okay? You know, and... <laughs> never mind, never mind, okay? Titus 3, 8, on to verse 11. <laughs> Even the one guy from Canada who does attack videos, at least he even will do attempts to edify and encourage. Even he will do that. Who does mudslinging, bring up pass, attack, like these coadjutors do? He does that, yes. But at least he even attempts. He at tries to encourage. Okay? You devils, who all you do is that you don't. That that's bad when one of your own at least does the at least attempts to encourage and strengthen and edify people when you devils don't? When the rest of you don't? Come on now. That but this is a faithful saying. Titus 3 verses 8 on to verse 11. This is a faithful saying. And these things I will that thou affirm constantly, that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable unto men. But avoid foolish behaving as if there is no God, behaving as if you say in your heart there is no God, foolish questions and genealogies and, note the comma there, and contentions and Note the comma there, strivings about the law, semicolon, for they are unprofitable and vain. A man that is an heretic, after the first and second admonition, reject. And how many times have people rebuked some of you? More than once, than twice, actual brethren? But yet, take no heed to it. Okay? I was wrong in many things before, and I repent of them now. The conduct of some people who claim to be of the church of the living God, and what they're doing and slandering and attacking, doing as the brother, as, as um, doing what these other devils would do, can't, can't stand for that. There's no place for that amongst the church of the living God. Okay? Knowing that he that is such is subverted and sinneth, being condemned of himself. Your own actions speak a lot about you. Finally, verse 8. I will early destroy the wicked of the land, that I may cut off all wicked doers from the city of the Lord. Ephesians chapter 4. Here, actually... We'll use this one. Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4 and we will be done. Ephesians chapter 4. Verses 17. Unto the close of the chapter. I haven't used this in a long time. On every page of scriptural text in this copy of the scriptures this is uh, this is the set of scriptures that was used in the video um, let us reason together there isn't a page on this in this set of scriptures that doesn't have a mark on it oh I guess I'm boasting huh <laughs> tell that girl to get a haircut okay Ephesians 4 17 on to verse 32 close of the chapter note this Verse 8 in Psalm 101, I will early destroy the wicked of the land, putting off the old man, which is corrupt, which is dead, right? Because of the wickedness, okay? That I may cut off all wicked doers from the city of the Lord. Ephesians 4, 17 unto the close of the chapter. This I say therefore and testify in the Lord, 
that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind. So Gentiles who are not saved of the church of the living God walk in the vanity of their mind, as do, uh, as do Jews. Hmm. Hmm. Having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness, not of their eyes, but of their heart. I think you got a blind heart going on. Who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness to work all uncleanness with greediness. But ye have not so learned Christ. If so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus. The Holy Ghost will guide you into all truth. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Okay? That ye put off concerning the former conversation, the old man which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. We got to touch it. We got to do it. We got to. You, you know where we're going, right? I'm not going to tell you. Because, uh, okay, because you read right there and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. I am presuming that you do follow along and you know where I'm going. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice and not on the devils. They sacrifice dead things, by the way. Holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Hmm. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. But yet it's okay to do as the devils do. Okay, whatever. And that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. New creatures in Christ. You're a new creature, aren't you? You're not being forced at gunpoint to walk as a new creature. You have to make the right choices. And unfortunately, we all fail at that. Wherefore, put away lying. Speak every man truth with his neighbors, for we are members one of another. Be ye angry, and sin not. Guilty. So are you. Or oh, you're not. You lie and your breath stink. And your feet, too. Let him, uh, be ye angry and sin not. <laughs> Let the sun, let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Oh boy. Both my wife and I have failed that. So have you. You, ha you say you haven't, you're a liar. You're a liar, go away. Okay? Neither give place to the devil. You go to bed angry, you sin in your anger, you're giving place to the devil. You do things according to the devil's ways, you're giving place to the devil. You're speaking with a froward heart, froward mouth, froward lips. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that needeth. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister Grace unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. If you are of the church of the living God, and you are doing things as the lost, coadjutor, wicked devil Christians are doing, um, you're grieving the Holy Ghost that's in you. You're not doing things the way he would have you to do. When you resort to the way that they do it. Are supposed to be different. Let all bitterness, you bitter, and wrath, it's not you to take uh, vengeance as his, and anger, and clamor, clamorous 
foolish woman is calamorous. It's better to dwell, is it what? In the wilderness than with an angry and contentious woman. Uh huh. Yeah. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath But you justify yourself before men and do that which is abhorrent in his sight. Brethren, sisters, Church of the Living God, the devils are laughing at those of the Church of the Living God when we engage in tactics that they themselves employ. And the Church of the Living God right now is so fragmented because flesh has gotten in the way and we're resorting to things that we shouldn't. Is it any wonder why atheists contact you and say, you know, you're right. <laughs> you're right about what you say about these Christians. You're right about these people who um, turn it into a high school clique. When atheists, professed atheists, who have more courtesy speaking to you than some of these supposed brethren. You know, I think, like one, I think, you know, I think you're pretty crazy, but, you know, there again, you make sense in what you say. That was from an atheist, professed atheist. But yet, of the Church of the Living God, people are not like that. Hmm. That's weird. Anyway, that's going to be it for this video. It's really hot in here. i got to get a fan going. I realize that those of you who are walking contrary to the scriptures, I realize that this is not going to help you. I, as a matter of fact, it's going to make it worse. I understand that. But you have been warned you have been lovingly admonished and rebuked. Hey, I got rebuked when the Lord and I were going through this, putting this together. Okay? I got like, wow. Wow. Okay? Ow. Okay? Consider your ways. And be mindful, brethren. I don't want there to be any confusing us with them. Okay, That's why I am adamant about removing the term Christian from the vocabulary. I know it's not going on anywhere. I understand that. Okay, And I don't say you're in sin if you call yourself a Christian. But I've put this in practice. Okay, And trying to explain to an atheist okay, or someone, the difference between the Christians, better yet, I believe, just to get rid of it and go with what the scriptures as what we refer to ourselves as and not as what the world refer to us, us as. Because yes, Christianity, as it is today, is a judgment. So, please consider your ways. I love you. I love you so very much. And for some of you, this is the only option. Because can you be trusted with an email now, seeing what you have done, some of you? I know uh, that, that's, that's something. Uh, you know, people like to reveal emails that people have sent. Um, that, you know... I remember even His Holiness, Mr. Denlinger, wouldn't do that. He wouldn't do that. But yet others are quick to do that. So, we love you. Thank you for those of you who pray for us. Thank you to all of you who help us. 
Uh, thank you so very much. Let's be different, brethren. And let's not, let's not be like these Christians. I love you. We'll see you in the next video.